I was just, you know, part of what's going on. So uh, just uh, happy to be back here and happy to be you know, going through the grind with everybody else uh, as opposed to remotely. You're back here to the yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't think we need to kind of get into all these discussions about COVID really right now with, with us. I mean, it's kind of football, you know, with all due respect, uh, you know, kind of where I'm going to try to take this conversation. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled about that. I miss these guys. <clears throat> I told them they look, they look a lot better on video than they do in person. Uh, so it's, uh, it's good to, to kind of get back into the camp mode, which, you know, we're trying to spend a lot of time together. Uh, as a staff and then obviously as a as a unit and and uh you know build that type of relationship that gets us through a, a long season what kind of indicators do you get about the offense the the well this will be good good practice against another 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 unit another you know strong defense um but we have a lot of respect for for their defense and you know for us it's applying our rules um going against a different scheme and and making sure that we follow those rules because we'll see some things that were you know unexpected that they're getting ready for for the season so um, it's a good test and uh, I know our guys are going to be you know excited to see a new group too. Yeah well as, a, as an offense we do everything as a group um, you know we just got done meeting with each other you know, we've been in there for a couple hours. You know, we take our 30-minute break to go eat, and then we're back in there. So uh, we look at it, you know, as, a, as one big family in there anyway. So, you know, whether it's co-coordinator, you know, tight end coach, quarterback coach, receiver coach, line coach, you know, assistant, th those guys have voices too. And, and we think that everybody's voice should be listened to. And, uh, you know, then at some point we make a decision. Yeah, I mean, that'll be part of it. I think we have, a, you know, a plan for the whole season. And that's kind of really what we're getting ready for in training camp. It's hard to just say this particular game, it's going to be exactly like this. Because we'll, we'll do our own, you know, checks and balances to make sure that's exactly how we want it. And then we'll go from there. What do you want to see from Tua over the next three weeks? Well, just he's continuing to improve. Um, and his leadership's improving. His communication's improving. You know, not just on the field, but off the field. Um, so, you know, he, he knows that every day is a chance to get better, and, and he's done that. And there's certain parts of our game, his game that we want to continue to improve. Uh, he knows that we're never reached our ceiling. That's kind of the way we look at it. And uh, so, you know, we go travel to Chicago. We'll see some different stuff, and you know, we're going to have to make some corrections, I'm sure, and then we'll, we'll go from there. I think a lot of it, uh, there's, some, there's some positives that we're seeing that you know we can apply to the seat. I think right now there's some some parts of our offense that we're checking to see if that's something sustainable or we need to do something to improve on to help you know Tua to help the offense out. So um, he, he's he's throwing the ball well, and uh, you know we chart everything. So you know we're going to stay on top of that. I think uh, for each year, you know, you, you build your own role. And, um, you know, we're, Eric and myself are in a position where, you know, at, at some point we're going to have to make a decision on, hey, is this the direction we want to go as an offense? And so, but we're continuing to, to try to put more on each other's plate um, in that room as an offense, not just myself, not just Eric. So it's, a, it's always a process, and, and we're going to try to arrive at, at a point here pretty soon, you know, right before the season. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've got a lot of them out there, and they're all getting a lot of reps, and that's really what this time is for. Um, you know, building the base in the, in the run game, blocking, communication with the edge players, uh, with protection and blocking, and then getting out there and getting open. Um, you know, so they've all had their their pluses and minuses, and. Um, you know, we we got to keep continuing to grow because there's there's a good group there that's flexible and versatile, and uh, that's how we want it. We want to be able to use everybody in the same you know similar role. Hey George, it's good to Jeff, see you. what's up, man? Yeah. Perfect. Not everybody is traveling everywhere, but I look forward to seeing you 
Yeah, yeah, no question. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We don't want you to get hit by a ball or anything. Hey, yeah. um, we've all observed Tua speaking to his teammates after practices, and that's an excellent example of how he stepped up in the leadership area. Yeah. Can you kind of take us behind the scenes and give us another not so obvious example of how he's exhibiting that leadership with his team? Yeah, well, I think, you know, when, when we speak as coaches, we give the 30,000 foot view on how we feel like the play, you know, should be should be run, how we want it executed. But ultimately that player that is running that particular route may run it uh, a little bit different than another player. And so he's, he's taken that um, to go ahead and talk to those individual players, how they run it. Right now, you know, maybe it's Devontae or something that may have not repped that play, but you know, he's capable of running the play. And so, you know, there's got to be a communication uh, that, that can continue to grow uh, to make that play work. That, that's what happens. The players make the plays work. And so they, they have to go ahead and take it ownership and, and take it as their own and, and grow from there. When the locker room door opened, I learned something I didn't know two years ago, that Fitzy used to drop in on the linebackers. I didn't know that. And it's probably more common. I should have known that. But um, how does a player become a leader, not just of the offense, but eventually, like Fitzy, yeah. sort of, of the whole team, you know, respected by everybody, every coach, every player, offense, defense, kicker. How does, how does one do that? Yeah, that's a, that's a very complicated, you know, question just because, you know, leadership is, is you know, partially earned too. And, um, you know, when you're young, there's a lot of steps that, you know, for a young player that you have to, you know, step over to, to, to be finally, you know, what, what we envision. And um, it's not just Tua, it's a lot of our young players. You know, we ask for a lot of those guys to be leaders at, at their own position too. So, um, you know, I think it's one day at a time for him. And those strides that you're talking about, speaking to the team, those aren't easy to do, you know, after a bad practice or an average practice. You know, it's easy to do after a good practice. But we know that this game, there's ups and downs. And, you know, he's going to have to confront his teammates on how he saw things, how we can as a unit get better. And, and you know, we appreciate what he's doing after practice, you know, in regards to that. You and I think Eric and maybe Flo have talked about how the offensive playbook is like a living document. I don't know if that was your phrase, but it's a good one. Um, I like the living document. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to what extent have you guys been able to um, gain a lot of um, input from the quarterback. How, how much is he, your starting quarterback, involved in choosing what's going to end up in there? Yeah, well, it's, hard, it's hard to run a play, you know, without making sure that not only everybody understands the design of the play, but they believe in it and they know the ins and outs and, and can make the play work, like I talked about. Um, so we run things by the quarterback, and we like their, their feedback. Sometimes if the feedback isn't necessarily 100% positive, we, we can ask him, you know, what part of this play do you not understand? And that's where we see each other as colleagues. You know, we want to go out there and win together. That's our main goal. And so when we can speak together, speak the same language, and, and really understand what we're trying to do, then, then that'll be the biggest you know, uh, benefit to, to, to those plays. So my coverage area now is Palm Beach, and we're set at the Palm Beach field. Yeah. So I, I can't get enough of the set. Is there anything you can share on your set that's sort of uh, been surprising to you or especially pleased you? I mean, Jacoby is as good of a professional to be around, um, regardless of just being the quarterback. Um, you know, he, he's a good communicator. He comes into practice and work every day with a, a great attitude. Um, we love him. He's good for Tua. Um, he's has some game experience. Um, and, you know, he's, he's won in this league. It's a hard league. And um, he knows that. He takes his job seriously. And at that position, you know, it's a good example uh, to be set. So, um, like I said, I can't say enough good things about Jacoby. I'm looking forward to Chicago. It's good to see you in person. Even though I guess if we were outside, I wouldn't have to wear a mask. Yeah, no question. But, uh, it's 
It's actually better because the sun's down on that. Yeah, no, yeah, trust me. I'd, I'd, I'd be sunscreened up. I like this setup. Yeah, yeah, it's not, not bad. Everything else going okay? Yeah, you like the new facility or what? It's awesome, huh? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. They give us, uh, we have a, they added a coffee machine. I drink like that. It's got to charge you. I'm like yeah. that, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm like Dan Campbell. I start my day with like four shots of espresso. Yeah, after two, we got to charge your ass. <laughs> Can't be taken from our, our beans. I'll see you in Chicago. All right, we'll see you. Um, we probably asked about this a little bit before, but in general, uh, the co-coordinator alignment, um, your thoughts on how that's working out so far? Yeah, well, you know, kind of similar to the spring where we talked about this. Now, Eric and I have been together here, you know, last couple years, so this is going on our third year. Uh, we know each other very well. Um, we talk a ton. So, um, but we're, we we do everything, whether it's co-coordinator, quarterback coach, receiver, we do everything together. So when we're in there, everybody's got a voice. Um, and if they see something, we tell them, speak up, and, you know, we'll address it. And so at some point, Eric and I will come to an agreement on, you know, what direction we need to head. And obviously, Coach Flores helps with that too. So um, to us, it's, it's, it's been fun. You know, we, we really enjoy working with each other a lot. We think uh, his phone rings and my phone rings a little bit more uh, with each other calling. So uh, uh, that's been, like I said, that's been pretty fun. When did you first meet him? Was it before you were on the staff together? Well, I've known of, I've known of Eric. And, um, you know, when I came here, he was already here. So um, he, was, he was great. Now, so this is when we first start to get to know each other. Now, uh, um, are you going to be up here, down here? Yeah, we are. We we have a plan for that. So, um, and you know, it's preseason. So, hopefully, that original plan, you know, that sticks. If not, then we'll make adjustments. So we're not set. I've been upstairs. I've been downstairs. You know, we'll kind of we'll kind of take that in stride. Where will you be Saturday, for example? Yeah, we we got to get there first. So uh, once we get there, we'll, uh, I think it'll be pretty easy to tell if I'm up or down during the game. So we'll, we'll all keep that anticipation going. I'm sure that's, that'll, uh, that'll grow. Um, something I asked Eric, and I want to get your viewpoint on this. There was a while ago where Miles was talking about the playbook, and he talked about how different it is from a player's perspective, at least. When you and Eric sat down to put this playbook together, what was the one or two primary objectives for you outside of uh, the obvious we got to score points yeah uh, well we got we got a lot of talented players but they're different and they all have different skill sets and that includes the line and their blocking that includes the quarterback you know that includes tight ends receivers obviously the backs are involved so and to get that all together into a cohesive offense, that takes a lot of time. And we're, we're still looking through practice to make sure that we have you know, designed the right things. If not, we gotta change it. So we're a, you know, a fluid group that kind of changes on the fly if we need to. And um, I would say that the playbook is always working. You know, we call it a working playbook. Uh, we're not just gonna take out the page and, and run that play. You know, if it's not, if it needs to get changed, we'll change it. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's the, to me, the fun part of football and the growing every year, you know, you grow as a coach and, and we're continuing to do it this year. I assume it's all, it, the, the playbook is, is not printed at all anymore, right? It's all electronic? Oh, no, I, well, it's, it's both, you it's know, both? yeah. So if you change it, you literally have to yeah. tear a page up. Yeah, we'll tear it out, we'll retype, you know, we're both good at the computer, and uh, you know we'll get we'll get those documents set. If not, we we got one of us that can do it. Now, when you talk about trying to tailor it for guys with different um, skill sets, does that mean that the playbook is maybe it was like this before and it's like this now? Or? I mean, I think it's as big as it needs to be to make sure that everybody's got a uh, you know a piece of it. What we don't want to do is live in one world. Um, with the play and the design needs to be, you know, <clears throat> big picture design so that, you know, if there's an injury or um, a different grouping that 
those plays will either work with that grouping or we move on to another, you know, another scheme or another mode. So is it big or is it big? Oh yeah, it's big. It's, it's big? Yeah. Is it's, there a danger in getting too big? No question. I mean, there's always a fine line and there's, you know, the perfect answer for the perfect playbook is always told at the end of the year, you know. So up until that point, we're, we're going to, like I said, fine tune each day, each practice and make sure we, you know, are trending in the positive direction. George, I want Let's to go. ask you about our, the RPO offense and, and why it has taken root so much in the NFL and I guess all levels of football. Why, why is it being so utilized so much? Yeah, but really the rules of the game. And so, you know, if they allow a throw to be made with the lineman not getting to a certain distance downfield, then, you know, we're taking advantage of the rules of the game. Um, you know, there's a point where the penalty flag gets thrown because maybe the line are downfield. So that part of it's been a, a process, a working process. But, um, you know, it, it's hard to put a player who's, you know, in a run conflict also in a pass conflict, you know, defensively and make sure that, you know, they're taking care of both run and pass. So that's kind of where we're, we're the RPO game is starting to, you know, trend in a more frequent level um, you know a lot of times it's been play action where you know you hope to get the linebackers to come up on the run and then you throw behind their heads uh, these guys are getting pretty good at, at seeing the difference between run and pass so that's where that 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 mode is continuing to trend now there's there's some things that you know defenses can do to take away from that so um, you know it's our job to kind of to see what's going on from a, from a scheme standpoint and then you know, work work the other way. How, how much is the jet sweep an, an important element of that in terms of occupying a defender? It's it's part of it too, and um, you know sometimes versus zone, it gets handled differently than versus man, and um, a lot of a lot of things are not seen on tape from an offensive perspective. Um, you know, as far as how they're going to handle it, so that part of it is a little bit of a unknown sometimes to an offense where we have to make sure that we do enough studying where we know the possible options that a defense may have to defend it and then, you know, adjust from there, you know, if, if we're going to use the jet sweep. Um, so it's another element. A lot of times those guys have some speed, you know, just flipping the ball and run around the edge. So you know, what we're trying to do is have the defense defend both vertically and horizontally on each play um, and, and not just one or the other. Then, then you know you've got you've got a lot of options offensively. With, with, with the quarterback, what goes into that decision? I mean, it's a split second where you have to decide to hand it off, or is it the read before the play? It's uh, some of it is before the play, some of it is post snap. Um, so there's some different versions, and you know it takes you know a quick decision maker and a quick quick thrower or quick uh, you know quick release from the quarterback too um, so you know some of those some of those are, are learned uh, a lot earlier you know based on what the colleges are doing right now um, high school kids are doing it so some of that stuff that can continue to carry on helps the you know quarterback um, we, we think that the quarterback's got to be very diverse um, at some point so one mode will get taken away by a lot of these teams. There's some some great coaches out there. Um, we know all about them, and uh, so we have to have multiple modes to attack a defense, and not just really live one way or the other. Now we saw, yeah, we saw the spread offense come from college to the NFL. Now the RPO is what is it coming from high school to college to the NFL? Yeah, it's just uh, everybody likes a good play. So if a good play works at any level, we can uh, we'll take a good play. Um, and so, like I said, some of those are, are old school plays, some of them are new school plays. You know, we got, we got a mix of all of them. So.